if you're a betting person, you probably need to keep betting on the Braves because they are yes. really, really delivering 20 and four so far in the month of June with their most recent triumph over the Minnesota Twins. And not a bad team, a team that came to Truist Park over 500, a team that left Truist Park under 500. <laughs> but that's that's what the Braves are doing, dismantling teams, winning yep. eight series in the month of June. And yet another one, a sweep. So 3-0 was the count last night and or yesterday and a lot of that was due to a guy who was on a plane to play a minnesota team but it was the triple a minnesota team so he was a triple a Gwinnett. he gets the call hey man you're gonna have to fly back to atlanta he flies back to atlanta and then gives the braves almost five innings of just eight strikeouts just amazing pitching so first one to start with him because this is his first start of 2023 after spending time on the 60 day IL. So Mm -hmm. how important is it for the Braves to have seen him on his first start in the majors with them to have an outing like that? It's, it it just goes back to, you know, Brian Snicker and double a, right? Cause when everybody, we talked about on this show, we talked about how Mike Soroka was the guy and, you know, and and Mark Bowman, you know, had had, was tweeting now saying, Hey, more than likely he's going to be guy. Even Jeff Schultz of the athletic did the same thing. Like we were like, okay, multiple guys are reporting that Michael Soroka might be the guy, but yes, like it also then came out. Snicker kind of gave a little insight as to why they um, brought Kobe out of the end because they like the matchup, right? You know, as a left-handed pitcher, you know, Michael Soroka's a right-hander, a righty. You know, they like, like they like the matchup, and guess what? He end up in, in, end up proving them right. Like you're talking about to to the tune of eight strikeouts, only one walk. You know, and those are some of the things that you kind of take a look at, you know, and even talked about how, you know, maybe should have kept them in the game. And we mentioned it just a little bit yesterday, but like I'm at the point now where I'm not going to question those guys when they make certain decisions. You know, I know I know that's the that was the easy thing to do early on in Snickers tenure. Uh, um, But now I'm at a point where I actually trust this guy when it comes to making those necessary decisions. And it it definitely looked like the right one. And being that Michael Soroka is more likely going to hit the mound on Friday, I'm all for that. Let let me let's see Michael Soroka. He's been doing well in AAA ever since he got sent down. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And the bullpen helped. The, from an efficiency standpoint. Yes. So they didn't, you know, tire themselves out, if you will. It's a day game, right? So right. really you've got a day and a half to reset for a big showdown with the Marlins as they are just six and a half games back of the Braves in the NL East. So I think, like you said, he was playing a chess game of saying, hey, I know what's going to work in this final game against the Twins. And I also know what I have to face this weekend. So I'm Thinking ahead, it for him, it, it was probably he was probably looking at it almost like it was a four game series, meaning the twins kind of tacked on to the Marlins, if you will. But it's interesting because the piece last night, and and we talk about this all the time too. If you take Ronald Acuna Jr. out of the equation, Jarvis, you could literally, literally make the case for anybody else being an MVP at any time. Matt Olson is that second guy who's the MVP right now. It was Austin Riley at a point. Exactly. So if you can plug and play uh, Sean Murphy, you can plug and play Marcel Ozuna, what he's done at the plate. You can plug and play. And the reason I mention that is this, because when you start adding those pieces, right, Mm -hmm. and you look at it holistically, you get a Colby Aller to give you what you need. And right there lurking in July – would be Max Fried and Kyle Wright. And hopefully Michael Soroka shows up uh, big tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's how you have a near historic month. 20 and four is where they are now. If they happen to finish 21 and four and get that first game against the Marlins, here's what they would be. The only team in major league history to win 20 plus games, hit 55 plus home runs and average 300 in a single month. Now, the Braves had a 14-year run back in the day. Yeah, you were yeah. here to see it front and center. I was watching yeah. it from a distance. Mm-hmm. But at the midpoint of the season, is this the best team you have ever seen the Braves literally put out there night after night? Yeah, em- embracing prisoner of the moment. You know, when when almost – that's kind of how I feel when it comes to baseball because, like, you know, there are so many games. Like, I almost have to – 
for me, I have to live in the moment, right? Living yes. in the moment, yes. To answer your question, yes. Like this is this lineup, like from top to like literally one through nine, adding in the DH piece, right? Yes. Because we didn't have that during during that run back in the nineties with the Atlanta Braves. Like so pitchers had the bat. You know what I'm saying? You had guys like Tom Glavin who embraced that and loved to actually get up to the plate and actually try to do some things with um with that bat in his hands. But when you think about now, like with what the way Marcelo Zuna is swinging the bat, like you mentioned, Matt Olson up here in the conversations with Shohei Otani, like, oh, he's right on his heels or, or he's right mm-hmm. there or he's tied at the top of, of, yes. of the major leagues with home runs. So those are some of the things that I, I look at and say, you know what? Yeah, you have to because, like, this team is loaded. Then Sean Murphy, like, who brought who was brought in for defensive purposes, but he's been – He's been a hell of a guy at the plate as well. Yes, then you got yes. the MVP candidate and, and, and Ronald Acuna. Then let's go ahead and talk about Michael Harris the second as well, who's been tearing the cover off the ball. The dude is in conversation with Ted Williams. Like we talked about yes. that yesterday. Go check that episode out if you missed it. But I think those are some of the things that I have to take into consideration and say, you know what? Yes. I haven't seen a lineup like this one through nine because like, yeah, the DH got added in a couple of years ago. So, Looking at but down this roster, like this is murderer royalty. Like literally, there are no breaks going yeah. up and down this doggone lineup for sure. It's it's not, and that's why you can see them having seventy six games out of eighty where they literally had a run in the first inning because they're, they they punish you early, crazy. and yes. it is crazy because when you put the Marlins and Mets together, one hundred and fifty nine games combined. Guess how many? runs they had in the first innings 47 that's yeah that so look at the margin the difference in the team that technically is on your heels at six and a half games back but when i think about that i say to myself too you know this team has always prided itself on defense right right and with the pitching rotation and really the pitching staff overall bullpen included it really seems like they figured it out like even if they have an off night or one has an off night, somebody's right there to say, hey, you can you can pull him from the game, put me in and I'll finish, close this inning out or I'll close out this game. And then, of no course, no matter the situation, too, I just want real quick, um, no matter the situation, too, because the twins went over 23 T yeah. and with runners in scoring position. So yeah. it's like that's how you start a rotation, bullpen, right. what well, don't matter, yeah. like whoever's on the mound, they were getting the job done. Exactly. That's how you get a four hit game. Yes. That's exactly how you get a four hit game. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you really like them as a collective. And I say all of those things because number one, I don't really see a weakness. Whereas a month ago, I might've told you, I did see a weakness and thought that maybe Alex Anthopoulos was going to go and do something big, maybe towards the trade deadline yeah. for the bullpen. But is there really a weakness? Like one that you should be concerned about or are even the weaknesses easy fixes? Wow, that is a good question. Um, when I, obviously the first thing to come to mind, Max Free Cal Wright, right? Like you mentioned earlier, Max Free is set to come back in July sometime, and Cal Wright a little bit further back than that mm-hmm. in August. So, so many of those, that's that's my concern. But I don't feel like that's a weakness because hey, they've been figuring it out, right? Whatever, whatever strong band aid, super strong band aid that you could think of, that's what the Braves have been running out there, you know, to be especially in the month of June, like yes. with the tune to the tune of being twenty and four in this month and trying to break a major league record or at least tie uh, a major league record for yeah. wins in the month. So I can't sit up here and say that there's a weakness because the way they're swinging the bat. The way their their bullpen is, is is actually coming through for them, and whoever out on the mound, whether it be Spencer Strider or Bryce Elder and all those guys, like I can't sit up here and say, you know what? Yeah, they probably need to go out and go get another guy, or Alex and Thompson need to get on the phone. Like I was not like that in the beginning of the year, but now yes. I'm cool. Like I'm cool. I'm cool with whoever yeah. they put out there because at the end of the day. If the pitchers don't get it done, those bats more than likely, especially yeah. as, as hot as it is outside, mm-hmm. as, as hot as those bats have been as of right. late. And this is where you start being nitpicky, right? Because right. the only weakness that I would say, and again, nitpickiness, is defense. They had four errors 
in game two yes. against the twins, but yes. that's also uncharacteristic of them. So Absolutely. again, that's just nitpicking. And to me, that's something that they easily course correct because Michael Harris, the second had what a double play last night. And mm -hmm. then there was a four, six, one play that was so beautiful between Ozzy Albies and Orlando Arcio after they'd made those errors in that game. So they cleaned it up, fixed it quickly. But again, that's just nitpicking because I also believe anything that you can find that's a little bit of a disconnect for them is something that is an easy fix. So yeah, everydayers, what say you? I mean, you guys, especially those of you who are born and raised here, or like me, you're a transplant, but you've been a Braves fan all your life. Do you guys think that this, at this midpoint, is the best Braves team that has been? The best Brave teams that they've tried it out there? Let us know. Of course, check us out on YouTube. And that is where you can make your comments about the Braves. Or if you want to comment about the Falcons and Grady Jarrett's Thoughts on Desmond Ritter? Do that too. And of course, if you're driving down the road, make sure you download this podcast before you get on the road so you can listen to us and have a nice, beautiful, sunny day going down these streets of Atlanta.